I want to set the scene for this conference in the next 10 minutes by talking about what I call the Humanity Plus Agenda. An agenda is when you try to define priorities. And it is my belief that society as a whole is not yet focusing on some of the most important priorities for the coming decade. I want to talk about priorities. I'm not just talking about something for governments to do. I'm talking about uh, things for universities to do, for institutions and industries to do, and indeed for individuals to do. And I believe there are things that deserve more attention, analysis, and yes, more resourcing and funding. And they're all to do with solving some of the major challenges, threats, and risks that we face as individuals, as a society, and indeed our civilization. And I won't list in any detail the set of risks that we're facing, but it is quite clear that we can't keep living the way we're doing. It's not sustainable. We'll have uh, ecological, environmental, huge issues. We'll have issues with the economy, and there are issues with uh, ongoing terrorism, which could get worse as more extreme terrorists in due course could get their hands on extreme weapons of destruction. We can't keep living as we are. Some people say we have to go back and live a simpler life. I believe instead that the best way is to go forward. And the most important thing that can make the biggest difference for all of us that we'll have a fulfilling individual life and fulfilling society in the future is if we can embrace and do more with technology. Technology which has changed the world in the last what, 25 years with the internet, with PCs everywhere, with smartphones, with satellite navigation systems, and goodness knows what else, that improvements in the last 25 years are as nothing compared to what we expect in the next 25 years, and indeed possibly just the next 10 years. There is so much more that technology could do as we move from smartphones to smart things and to smart blood cells and so forth. Now some people don't like the idea of emphasizing technology. They say, well, that's just a technical fix, you know, it's, it just gives us gadgets, but it's not addressing the real human issues. And I'm sympathetic to that point of view. I'm not interested just in gadgets. But I do believe that technology can actually improve us in many ways. It can help to make education better. And when I talk about education, I'm not just meaning uh, a few years in, uh, in college or high school, I mean continuous learning as we all get smarter and as we all get uh, all the other kinds of intelligence too, better social uh, intelligence, emotional intelligence. And there's a two-way link here, as education gets better, technology will get, get better. There's another link with health, whereby we will become stronger and more robust and uh, indeed uh, kinder, more vibrant. And this links again to changes in society, because we will not actually get the kind of changes in technology that many of us hope for unless society makes a better environment for doing some of the innovation and the experimentation that's needed. And all of this adds up, as I said, to an enhanced human experience, boosting human potential rather than diminishing it. So that is my view as to the priorities, in very big terms, uh, the priorities that society should have. Yes, society is spending money on all these things, but I don't think we're doing it in a sufficiently smart and focused way. So I talk about instead of health, we should have health plus more emphasis on people living not just well, but better than well. Emphasis on improved education, where people indeed are gaining skills, uh, uh, becoming smarter through all kinds of augmentation, improved technology, improved society, leading to indeed humanity plus. And without uh, having the time to go through the details, I have spelt out uh, elsewhere a list of 20 priorities which fit under these five headings. Now, in the talks ahead, we will have some of uh, the speakers addressing in more details some of these things. So, Anders Sandberg will be on later this morning. We'll talk about cognitive enhancement uh, as a means to improve, become smarter. Uh, Rachel Armstrong will cover, amongst other things, synthetic biology, which is how we can program uh, things on the organic level, not just on the silicon level, and the possible uh, big consequences. Uh, Aubrey de Grey, after lunch, will be talking about anti-aging treatments. This is again in the theme of uh, Health Plus. And I do have one recommendation for you. Don't take too long over lunch. Be back here in time for that talk. You will enjoy that. 
Moving forward, we have a talk by David Pierce, which I can't quite easily characterise, but it is about humans being concerned about more things, a bigger vision than we've had historically. A vision, indeed, that we should obliterate suffering, not just for humans, but for all of the animal kingdom. Uh, we will also have a talk by Eamon Twyman, who, well, amongst other things, will talk about uh, humans having greater sensory capabilities and uh, greater uh, autonomy. And then uh, Natasha Vitamore will speak about uh, doing-yourself human enhancement, again, reaching the level of being better than well, and why that's an admirable and a good thing to do. We'll have a talk by uh, David Orban, who will talk about the Singularity University, which is an important initiative to spread more information about exactly what accelerating technology can accomplish in the near future, and about the risks, and about the options we have for doing the best with accelerated technology. David will also talk briefly about the Internet of Things, which is one of these other uh, imperatives, I believe, the next generation of uh, information and computing technology. And then there are some talks that don't quite fit under any of these categories. The last talk at the end of the day by Professor Nick Bostrom from Oxford University will look at existential risks, including uh, can we really cope with the risks that threaten this planet, and can we cope indeed with the risks that technology will unleash. And I'm very much looking forward to hear what he has to say. Uh, and the talk immediately after myself will be from Max Moore, who will talk uh, again, a very general overview about uh, the possible future of technology and what it means for us as humans. You will see that there's lots of connections between these different priorities, and as we make progress in one area, it should help us with others. But you may say, well, I'm a bit optimistic and a bit uh, gung ho. I have to say, actually, I am very worried. I don't think of any of this as inevitable. I see that the risks facing us as individuals and as a society are very grave. And I think there are also some temptations which uh, look quite attractive to some, but which could uh, derail this uh, possible future vision. So very quickly I'm going to run through these, what I call, six dangerous temptations. And one of them is indeed the view that, well, we could just stand and cheer from the sidelines, you know? We could say, hip hip hooray, I believe in technology, it's all going to happen. Well, I don't believe that's the case at all. I don't believe you can look into the laws of physics and say, yes, inevitably, society will get better. I think it's quite open what the future of society is, and it's down to us, indeed, what we do. We can individually make a difference as activists, uh, as people who talk, as people who engage and give, give our time and give our ideas. One particular aspect of the view, well, it's all going to happen inevitably, is people who say, well, look, the free markets are very good, it generates technology, doesn't it? And this will allow us, therefore, to have all the kinds of enhancements that, uh, to, that I've talked about. And whilst I say, yes, uh, the free market has done uh, marvellous things, I also point to the many terrible risks that uh, we have been facing recently and indeed uh, throughout the, the whole operation of the, the economy. Uh, and so I don't take that view either. I say, yes, these are good strengths, but we have to show our wisdom in guiding it. As we get smarter, then we can guide this more effectively without choking the innovation. Other people will say, no, the best uh, thing to go for is just do things the natural way. You know, nature is so beautiful and so tranquil and so well organized. And I understand why people say that, but I refute it as well. Nature is full of ugliness as well as uh, beauty. Nature is red in tooth and claw. Evolution has done an impressive job, but it's far from optimal. And I do believe that we, with our new thinking, will be able to augment it. Another dangerous temptation I worry about is the temptation of saying, well, this is risky, let's not get involved. You know, there could be some bad consequences. This is the so-called precautionary principle. I say we can't live that way either. Of course we have to manage risks, of course we have to analyze risks carefully, but doing nothing is at least as risky as seeking changes. The people who say, let's do nothing, let's just take the safe option, will actually lead almost certainly to a very suboptimal future for humanity. I also fear people in parts of the world who say, well, we already know the answers, you know, all the science is useful, all this uh, engineering is helpful, but the most fundamental answers have already been revealed in some final way, there's some prophet, whether it's a latter day or an ancient prophet. Again, I say religion has done lots of things which have uh, helped society in some ways, but it is no means the answer to our present day situation. And we have to use our new wisdom and new enlightenment, and we have to be active in helping people to escape from some of the shackles of fundamentalist thinking of all sorts. And the last on my list, and I say this with some trepidation in this hall, Conway Hall, which is in some ways the home of humanism, 
Conway Hall has been the centre of a humanist thought in the UK since the 1920s, and the society that is based here, the South Place Ethical Society, uh, was initially founded in 1793 with the vision that ethics should come to the fore when you shouldn't derive ethics from uh, God or religion. So I, with some trepidation, this rather venerable hall, I say no, nor should we think that humanism is sufficient, and the, nor should we think that current state of humanity is the final stage of evolution any more than monkeys or mammals might have said, yeah, well, we've arrived, there's no need for any more progress. I do believe it's only the enhanced humans of the near future that will be able, and which is you and me, if we get it right, we will be enhanced, we will be smarter, we will be kinder, we will be more energetic, we will be better able to collaborate, we will be better able to make sense out of all the options ahead of us, and with our help, with the help of artificial intelligence, with the help of augmented reality, and with the help of all these smart devices, we collectively can take